Hey guys, Antonio here with another review. Tonight I'm going to be talking about Bellini's Beatrice di Tenda, which was live from the Concert House am Gendarmenmarkt. Now, this is one of Bellini's most underrated operas that I feel needs a little bit more love, and the plot simply goes like this. Duke Filippo loves the noblewoman Agnese. Agnese loves the nobleman Orombello. Orombello loves Beatrice di Tenda, who is the widow of Facino Cane. Beatrice, well, she kinda likes him, but she chooses to preserve the memory of her late husband. Filippo and Agnese catch them in the act, and send those two to prison. So yeah, they basically charge them for infidelity. Filippo and Agnese are regretful of their actions, but Filippo, not wanting to be a wimp, just simply says, well, let's face it, let's end their lives once and for all. Agnese isn't really too happy to hear about this. She is definitely not happy at all. And the whole opera ends unhappily ever after. That's pretty much Beatrice di Tenda in a nutshell. Now, this is the first time I went into the Concert House am Gendarmenmarkt, and let me tell you, I simply loved being there. It was phenomenal. Entering the concert house was like entering a beautiful palace. And when I went inside the great hall, known as the Große Saal in German, I was simply awestruck. And not to mention, I had pretty much one of the best seats in the house. I was seated in row 8, which means that the sound was really, really, really audible. So, without out of the way, let's get into the cast and crew. The conductor was Felix Krieger, and the chorus and the orchestra are from the Berliner Opernkuppe. Chorus leader was Piotr Kupka. The assistant chorus leader was Tiziano Manka. The one who's basically in charge of the scene, the scene, scenery, whatever, is Isabel Ostermann. Basically, she's like the, you can say, acting coach, so to say. And let's move on to the cast of characters. Beatrice is sung by Valentina Farkas. Filippo is sung by Giuseppe Altomare. Agnese is sung by Christine Knorin. Orombello is sung by Giorgio Caruso. Anchino is sung by Matei Gal. And Rizzardo del Maino was sung by Raul Alonso, the last person being the member of the chorus. Now, truthfully enough, the only name I've ever heard from this cast of singers was basically Valentina Farkas. I basically saw her on YouTube as Blanchon and Gilda. The other singers are quite new to me, so, yeah. Well, let's get on to my critiques of the singers. So, in the role of Beatrice di Tenda, as I said earlier, was Valentina Farkas. Now, I've checked out her biography, and she has sung lighter roles like Pamina, Terbinetta, and Blonde, and Gilda. 
Yeah, so basically, Valentina Farkas is a lyric coloratura soprano, and Beatrice di Tenda is a dramatic coloratura soprano role. And to be very honest, every time I think about a singer who is going to sing the role of Beatrice di Tenda, I would always think of someone like Joan Sutherland or Edita Gruberova or Mariella Devia, anybody who is a dramatic coloratura soprano or any soprano with a big enough voice who can manage florid lines and all this arpeggios and, well, difficult stuff, so to say. And with Valentina Farkas, I was surprised. This is a soprano who has specialized mostly in light lyric and lyric coloratura roles, and here she is attempting a dramatic coloratura role. I know I sound like someone who is like a fach purist, but a, a fach purist, excuse me, but yeah. I'm not always like a hundred percent purist, so okay, with that out of the way, let's move on to the actual critique. So what can I say? She has a beautiful, beautiful tone. However, there are some setbacks. In her first act Caballetta, her high E flat was not really that audible. It was underpowered. Usually, a final high note would usually be powerful and electrifying. Unfortunately, with that high note, it was totally underpowered, which was which was a shame. But at least, at least I give her points for trying. Now, in the later parts of the opera, she got better. I would also like to note this somewhat unintentionally hilarious moment that she has with her shawl and especially with her shawl in the chair um especially in the first act there were moments where her shawl would end up being tied on the chair especially when she was trying to um go after the filippo of the evening which was like i said giuseppe altomare um, and she, and when she tries to reach for him, she just simply goes back and just still has the shawl with her. And especially in the finale of Act One, after that, she would simply r turn around and wrap herself with her shawl. And when the first round of applause was heard, she tried to get out of the shawl. And then she just simply, okay, turned the other way, turned the other way so that she could free herself from that shawl. It was really hilarious. It was just pretty much one of the most unintentionally hilarious moments I've seen in terms of a, an opera that's supposed to be a tragedy. But still, I guess it goes to show there are some operas that are um, well, according to certain directors that aren't always meant to be full on angst and depression. I mean, come on, we can have a little bit of humor here and there. Anyways, I mean, it also goes to show that Miss Farkas was a really, really great actress. Especially in her scene with um, Giuseppe Altomare. You could see the fear that she has in her eyes, especially when she was being tried for. And here's another uh, thing that she did with her shawl. She basically used them as, like, handcuffs, so to say. And that, I thought, was done pretty dramatically. And all I can say is, despite a few setbacks here and there, I have to say, Valentina Farkas was a really great singer, and a really great actress. Now let's move on to the Filippo of the evening, Giuseppe Altomare. Let me say that he is easily 
the best performer in this opera. He is easily, hands down, the best performer of this opera. You could really hear and really feel what he goes through in this opera. You could you could just really see the emotions that he has and the whole gamut of emotions. So, yeah. Excuse me for fanboying, but that's pretty much true. So, vocally, I thought his voice was a round, rich, metallic, baritone voice. He pretty much almost sounded like a bass. He had such gorgeous low notes and powerful high notes, I might add. And his stage presence was, as I said, really worth watching. And it was totally unforgettable seeing this man on stage. And he really, really made an impression on me and a lot of the audience. And what more can I say? I was really speechless. Well, in a positive way. It really goes to show that Mr. Altomare was really invested in his character. More than invested in his character, he was the character. He had such a powerful, metallic voice. And his acting was truly impeccable. So, a big, 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 big kudos to Mr. Altomare. Now, let's move on to the Agnese, Christine Knorren, who is a high dramatic mezzo. I thought she was really elegant, bo both vocally and physically. Well, there were some setbacks. In the first act duet with Orombello, her high C sounded strained. Well, not just strained, it was pretty inaudible compared to the tenor's high C. But still, she was a really, really beautiful singer after all. She was elegant also. In the first act, she wore like, um, she wore like an orange, pinkish, gown and in the second act she wore a red gown and I thought she was really elegant all throughout and she was a really great actress too especially in the first act I mean when she throws the letter to Orombello I mean I could simply believe that it's like saying come on come here honey do you wanna read something special from moi I thought it was really convincing. And I have to say, Miss Knorren was absolutely, uh, yeah, she was pretty good, was absolutely good in this role. And yeah, kudos to her. Now let's move on to the Orombello, Giorgio Caruso. I love his voice. Let's simply put, I really love his voice. His high C was powerful. Yeah, his high notes were really, really powerful. Especially in the second act. You really feel that when he's in prison, like when he's handcuffed, you could really feel the way he walks. It's like, okay, this guy's also in shackles as well, so okay. And... Yeah, that's all I can say. He really, really has a magnificent voice. He has a magnificent lyric tenor voice. And that is pretty much a godsend. And he was a pretty good actor too, but his biggest forte, no pun intended, was his voice. A it was a beautiful, powerful, lyric, tenor voice. What more can I say? 
Now let's move on to the smaller roles of Ankino and Rizzardo. Mate Gal was the Ankino. I thought he was a good tenor. I've seen his biography, well, basically from this program. And he, it says that he also sang roles like Ferrando and Nemorino. And you know what? I thought he was a pretty good singer. And Raul Alonso, he didn't really have that much stage time, but uh, when I heard his one line, I thought he was a pretty good singer after all. So overall, I feel that the I feel that the men basically give a more um they give a better vocal performance than that of the women. It's not like I'm saying that the women in the performance were bad. No, no. They were fantastic as well. It's just that they pretty much have some setbacks that should have been fixed or that need to be fixed. And but it really goes to show. Overall, I thought the cast was well done and and you know what? Valentina Farkas had the biggest round of applause. It really goes to show that, yes, yeah, she's able to overcome this feat of performing such a dramatic role, especially ones, especially the role that has, this role that has been mostly done by dramatic voices. And here's a lyric coloratura soprano that's able to pull it off, and I thought she did fantastically as well. So... Overall, Beatrice di Tenda, live from Concert House Am Gendarmenmarkt, was a worthwhile experience for me. It may be semi stage, but hey, I enjoyed it so much. Now, if I were to give it a score, I would have to say I would really rate it 4.5 out of 5. It's a near perfect score, don't get me wrong. It's just that, like I said before, the ladies basically have a shortcoming here or there, but nonetheless are really great singers. And you know what? I really wish the best for all of the all of the singers in their future roles to come. So Without further ado, I hope you've all enjoyed this review, this, well, unscripted review after all, and I wish you all a good night. Good night!